Introverts of Reddit, when was the most inconvenient time your social battery ran out? My early 20s. I'm 30 now and still haven't found the charger. I feel this. You are not alone. I'm 30 and the trick I found is to just preserve the battery as much as possible and only use it when absolutely necessary. Another method is to hone your energy vampire abilities so you can drain others to maintain what you need throughout the day. One second after committing to any social event, just getting the text asking me if I want to do something makes me sink farther into my bed. But the instant relief you get when cancelling those plans, oh man it's better than crack. Even better when they cancel. You don't feel guilty about cancelling on them, and you feel good about not having to go. My wife and I had a couple who mildly annoys me over for dinner and a board game. Game ended around 10pm, I was at the drained point, was a perfect time for goodbyes, and then my wife went to the sitting room, and started a whole new conversation with them 20 minutes later, I faked being asleep to get them to leave, you and your wife are polar opposites huh, yup, I think introverts tend to marry extroverts, we call them our people shields. Get halfway through telling a story, realize it's longer than I remembered, and have to grill through the rest of it. Edit wow lol glad y'all can relate. Can't believe I got my first gold and silver off of this lol. Oh my god. Anytime I start a story without realizing how many backstories and side stories I have to tell in order to make them understand the main story absolutely kills my battery. I'm horrible at telling stories because of this. I just need to give them context and then I get distracted and forget the main story I just short circuit and tell the absolute minimum summary of the story. Like, if I were to tell the story of Moby Dick to a group of friends, I'd just be like, one time this guy spent a really long time like, obsessing over a big whale and then he died and his whole ship sunk. It was tragic. And then I desperately hope that someone else will jump in with something more interesting to say. Dude, spoilers. Middle of job interview mayo oh why, do you want to work here? You know what, I don't, peace. There have been several interviews, where I've realized halfway through, that I don't want the job. Same, but once that switch flips I tell myself well at least this is good interview practice. It feels shitty though, when you see red flags so big they're flapping in the wind, and into your face. Or you flash forward 3 years, and see yourself absolutely miserable working there. This was me. I specifically had asked before the interview how much I would have to call clients. They said 10% of your day tops. When I get to the interview they said they meant 90%. I said no, I'm not working in a call center. Same. I worked a personal training job in the past, and I asked them about cold calling, no cold calling whatsoever, yeah, I cold called, and was on the phone a lot, also asked them about the wage system, it said minimum wage with incentives, yes it's minimum wage base pay, but our trainers make up to $25 an hour, yeah, only the top trainer who was there for 8 years made $25, most people only made like $10. I had broke up with a girlfriend and a very extroverted friend of mine asked me to hang out and party with him and some of his very extroverted friends. I said fuck it and went. It started out good, but by the third bar we jumped I was exhausted and ready to crash. Shitty thing was that we took my car and I couldn't leave without them. We ended up going to this high end club in Chicago and they bought bottle service for like $500. They all got drunk as fuck, and started urging me to get drunk, so I had to sip on water pretending that it was vodka. I pretty much spent the night trying to avoid the hordes of drunk people raving to loud as fuck dance music, while I had to manage my anxiety, so I didn't completely melt down. Afterwards I dropped their asses off, went home, and completely shut myself out from the world for a week. Probably any of those times, where my friend would say hey man we are gonna just be a few PPL playing Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, gonna hit the bomb, wanna chill, and I'm like yeah sure sounds good. I get there, and legit 20 minutes in, friend is like oh shit yeah there's that party tonight, let's hit the bar then go the party, and I'm like yeah sounds good. But I'm secretly like no and we end up at some house party with like 50 plus people, and I turn into Michael Sarah from Superbird. Why I I I do I do this? My friend of 12 years from USA, I'm UK, 
came over we met for the first time, and after 2 hours of us playing couch games like Overcooked, I was pooped I just wanted to play a single player game. So I showed my friend my Oculus Rift she loved it played it for a good hour, after I set it up, meanwhile I leave the room quietly pretending I'm still in the room and I go to the bathroom with my thirds to play Bravely Second. To this day they never knew I abandoned them for an hour. I'm no longer dating her, so I don't feel bad, but right in the middle of my ex's mom's birthday, where I was meeting her entire extend family, her aunt got really drunk, and passed out in the only bedroom I could have hidden, so I faked feeling suck, and hid in the bathroom. I was bored, and that's how I found out her mom keeps all her sex toys in a basket above her bathroom towels. Terrible place to hide sex toys. Everyone knows you hide them in your sock drawer. But that's where I keep my socks you don't keep your socks in your sex toy drawer. Around 2011. When my dad died 12 days ago. Apparently even warning people that I was going to be okay, but that I was going to check out for a while wasn't enough. RIPFB, VM, text, and ML in boxes. On the plus side, I've learned that I'm pretty loved. I'm on Reddit, and I'm exhausted. Some friends asked me to dinner. It was kind of understood that it would be just the three of us. Go over to their house. Lots of people there. Somebody's birthday. No dinner. I went up to them and said, I'm sorry, but I'm not staying. We can have dinner together another time. Bye. And walked out. Didn't care who thought I was the asshole. Don't pull that shit on me, because you know better. Dinner and party are two very different things. As an extrovert, I'm learning so much in this thread. For me, if there's evening themed food and there are humans, it's both a dinner and a party. Could be 5 people, or like, 3 dozen. It's a dinner party, yo. Will from here on out specify the amount of people I expect to come. Thank you for being understanding. For real. Thank you. While messaging people. I'm known for answering everything several days late, because I just don't have the social energy to type out a response I also find texting to be very stressful. Everyone wants a response as soon as possible, but I don't always want to be stapled to my phone. That's why I prefer either an email, a social media post people can respond to on their own time, or just an understanding that it won't be a constant back and forth. When I told myself I was going to extricate a group of people from my life, and then they invited me to game night, which inexplicably turned into a road trip to multiple other people's houses in the friend group, and not getting home until 3am. I love this thread and threads like it. Two of my closest pals are introverts. I'm an extreme extrovert. My goal is to avoid pressuring them, since I cannot relate. My husband is an extrovert, but is a lot less energetic, so he's happy to leave an event after a few hours. I tend to throw 12 hour parties. I've learned to not ask stupid questions and fet better at determining whether someone wants to interact. I hope Bob gets gold. 12 hour parties. Ah hell nah. My surprise engagement party. I cried and begged my new fiam to let me go to bed. When I meet people that are social vampires and drain all the air from a room and energy from people around. These persons are internally negative slash evil, but try to emanate positive slash good. Sometimes they are people with a bad past trying to truly turn around their lives. Sometimes they are evil people posing as good people. The waves they emit dry everything around. When I meet people like that I dry, and my battery goes from 100% to 0 in 5 seconds. I knew a guy like that bullied me at kindergarten. Years later, still a child, my family moved to Antha City and I moved to a new school, now high school. First day at school, who I see. Yes, the guy. All my high school with that guy on the same class. Six years later, after graduating college, I get my first job at a large company. Who is the guy I find at my first week there? Who? Who? Yes, the guy. He was known in the company as the prick asshole son of a bitch director of the international division. The fucking guy. Four years later, I moved from that country. Never saw the guy, yet. When a night of Netflix and chill ended with only chilling and watching Netflix, and I fall asleep. Never had another opportunity ever since that's rough, man. I hope you find an introvert partner.